it takes about three hours for us to get from Giro to Kyoto, giving us enough time to settle into our hotel before taking in a performance at the Gear Theater. It's a unique story about an abandoned doll factory where some humanoid robots are still trying to keep it running. But it's when one of the dolls brings a touch of magic into the factory, that's when the fun begins. It's a totally non-verbal performance that tells its story through a mime, a magician, a juggler, and a breakdancer, along with the magical doll. We found it very entertaining, and we're glad we were able to fit it in. But being a long day, we didn't have much time for sightseeing on our way back to the hotel. We start today with a visit to the Nijo Castle. We enter through the somewhat stark Grand East Gate. But once inside the complex, things changed as you were greeted with the gorgeous Karamang Gate. The castle was home to the many generations of the Takugawa family of shoguns, which ruled Japan during the 265-year Edo period, which started in 1868. These bronze bells that were used to warn about fires and other emergencies date back before the Edo period. Inside the castle grounds is the Ninomaru Palace, consisting of five large buildings with interconnected walkways. Inside the palace are what's called nightingale floors that were specially designed to squeak, making a chirping sound reminiscent of nightingales. Surrounding the palace are some very impressive gardens. It's amazing, no matter which direction you look at, there always seems to be a very composed, deliberate scene. Well, it's time for lunch, and we're heading over to the Nishiki Market, where we're hoping to indulge in some of Kyoto's renowned street food. The Nishiki Market is a five-block-long narrow street lined with over a hundred different shops and restaurants, and has been given the nickname Kyoto's Kitchen. Mary Ann started off with some tempura shrimp sticks, and I went for a folded egg omelet sandwich. They're not calling it what the other one was. Both were okay, but nothing to write home about. A little further along, we found a place that was serving large tempura shrimp. These were a lot better especially with a glass of sake. One of the last things we tried was some pot stickers, with the sign saying they were so good they didn't need sauce. We found them a little bland, thinking some sauce would have helped. This machine was making little cakes, filled with custard. With our stomachs full, we take another bus to the Shiomizadera Buddhist Temple. On our way to the temple, we pass through another preserved historic area where a lot of the houses have been turned into shops. We were surprised with the crowds, and the closer we got to the temple, the tighter it got. 
These small sculptures, in which there's nearly 200 of them, are of the Buddhist deity Jizo. The statues represent parents who have lost a child, and it's common for grieving parents to place a bib on the statues. Not far from the Pure Water Shrine, and on our way to the Yasaka Temple, we head through the Gion District, also known as Kyoto's Geisha District. This is another historic district where a lot of the original housing has been turned into shops and restaurants. Kyoto was spared from the large-scale bombing during World War II due to its cultural significance and lack of military targets, allowing much of its historical architecture to survive, such as the Yasaka Shinto Shrine. The initial construction of this shrine began in 656 and is now one of the most revered religious spots in Kyoto. At the main sanctuary, called the Honden, worshippers notify the gods of their presence using dangling cords to ring large bells before praying at the altar. As we've seen at a lot of these shrines, there are usually vendors selling unique and interesting food. <laughs> Just outside the temple in the Gion district, we got an early start at trying to find some dinner. We found an interesting place that specialized in okonyaki and udon noodles. But the sign said they didn't open till 5, and it was only 4.15. But we decided to stick it out and wait. We were shocked that within about 10 minutes, a long line of about 35 or 40 people formed behind us. After taking off our shoes, we were shown in. The place was small, only room for 16 people, and each seat had its own grill in front of it. Marianne had udon noodles, and I had okanaki. Both were the special combo, with shrimp, scallops, squid, pork, and beef. All that, along with a couple of glasses of plum wine, cost us only about $22. The next morning we're up early, and after a mediocre breakfast, we're off to Kyoto's more rural Arashiyama district, with our first stop at the bamboo forest. I think I would define this more of a bamboo grove than a forest. It's really not that big and only took us about 15 minutes to walk through it. Just on the other side of the bamboo forest is the Okochi Sanso Villa. This used to be the private estate of the famous Japanese actor Okochi Denjiro. The entrance fee here gives you access to the expansive gardens and meandering walkways, along with some matcha tea served in the tea house.
A short walk away is the Tenruji Temple, the head temple of the Renzai Zen sect of Japanese Buddhism. The original buildings were built in 1339, but were lost over the centuries due to fire and war. These current buildings date back to the late 1800s. Unlike the original buildings, the Tenruji Gardens survived the centuries in their original form. These gardens feature a large central pond, surrounded by rocks and pine trees, with a forested mountain backdrop. As we continued our walk to the central part of town, we passed many other smaller temples, most with beautiful little courtyards and gardens. The crowds started picking up as we got closer to the main street. Looking for a quick lunch, we found a noodle shop without much of a line. We ended up with a small, mediocre bowl of udon noodles. But it was improved with a sake and a beer. We're heading for the Awatayama Monkey Park. But first we need to cross the Togetsio Bridge, a popular landmark crossing the Kasura River. Tomorrow we're planning to take a raft like these, down some of the most scenic areas of the river. It's a rather steep 30 minute walk up to the monkey park. The monkeys here are snow monkeys, which are also called Japanese macats. These are all just wild monkeys, drawn here by the food. There's said to be up to 120 of them living in this area. There are quite a few signs, warning you not to touch or stare at them. But there is a screen shelter you can enter where you're allowed to feed them. Besides the monkeys, you can also take in a nice view of Kyoto. But it is the monkeys that attract your attention and keep you entertained. I mean, walked right up to it. On our way back to the train station, we stopped at what they call the Kimono Forest, the name playing on the nearby bamboo forest. But this forest consists of two meter high pillars with fabric in the traditional Koyu Zen style, typically used for kimonos. As we were leaving, they started to light the cylinders, making an even more spectacular presentation. We were also surprised to see a foot bath, similar to the ones we saw in Euro, But these ones weren't free. Tomorrow we're planning on returning to the same area, taking the Sagano Romantic Train and the Hazugawa Riverboat Ride. <laughs> 